Academic art, also referred to as art of the academies, represents a long-standing tradition in visual arts where the ideals of classical beauty, technical precision, and strict adherence to established standards of composition and form were paramount. It was particularly prevalent from the 17th through the 19th centuries in Europe, driven by the influence of state-sponsored art academies, such as the French Académie des Beaux-Arts. These institutions not only set the curriculum for art education, but also played a critical role in shaping the careers of artists through exhibitions, commissions, and the validation of styles and subjects deemed worthy of public and royal patronage. While its impact on European art is immense, academic art has also been both revered and criticized over the centuries. The origins and role of academies in the development of academic art the term academic in this context originates from the art academies, the most prominent of which was the French Academy, founded in 1648 under the patronage of Louis XIV. The French Academy was part of a larger movement across Europe to professionalize the training of artists. In these academies, students underwent rigorous instruction that combined theory with hands-on practice. They were schooled in the basics of drawing, anatomy, perspective, and composition, skills deemed essential for creating sophisticated works of art. At the heart of academic training was the emphasis on classical antiquity and the Renaissance. Greek and Roman statues, architecture, and literature were considered the pinnacles of artistic achievement, with their focus on symmetry, proportion, and idealized human figures. Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo da Vinci were held up as paragons, and students were encouraged to imitate their techniques and sensibilities. Students would progress through a hierarchical structure in the academy, starting with basic figure drawing and moving toward more complex works, including full compositions and oil painting. Competitions, such as the prestigious Prix de Rome in France, awarded top students with scholarships to study in Italy, further deepening their engagement with classical models. The Academy's control over official exhibitions, most notably the Paris Salon, gave them significant influence over public taste, determining which styles and subjects were to be embraced or rejected. Characteristics of academic art. Academic art adhered to a well-defined set of rules. Artists working in this tradition were expected to demonstrate technical mastery over drawing and painting, creating highly finished works that often prioritized form over emotion. Idealized representations of the human body, clear compositions, and a careful balance of light and shadow were emphasized. Subjects were drawn from history, mythology, and religion. Large-scale history paintings, which depicted events from ancient history or the Bible, were considered the highest form of art. These works were often characterized by dramatic narratives, heroic figures, and moral or allegorical undertones. Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingré, a leading figure of French academic art, created meticulously composed historical and mythological scenes that exemplify the style's devotion to clarity and idealized beauty. Portraiture and genre painting though lower on the academic hierarchy than history painting, also flourished. Portraits often depicted wealthy patrons or notable historical figures in poses and settings that reflected their status and virtue, further reinforcing the connection between art and societal ideals. Artists like Alexandre Cabanel, known for his painting The Birth of Venus, portrayed the human figure with an almost sculptural quality, blending technical mastery with a sense of refined sensuality. Landscapes and still-life paintings were generally considered lower genres by the academies, though certain artists such as Jean-Léon Jérôme and Thomas Couture achieved great success by incorporating these elements into more ambitious compositions. The Rise of Challenges to Academic Art Despite its dominance in the art world, Academic art began to face increasing criticism by the mid-19th century. 
the rigidity of its standards was seen as stifling creative freedom, and many artists grew frustrated with its emphasis on formality and tradition, at the expense of innovation and personal expression. The rise of movements like Romanticism, Realism, and eventually Impressionism represented a direct challenge to academic conventions. Artists such as Eugène Delacroix and Gustave Courbet rebelled against the academic norms by favoring more expressive, emotionally charged subjects and looser, more experimental techniques. Courbet's focus on depicting everyday life, rather than heroic or historical subjects, flew in the face of academic expectations. Meanwhile, the Impressionists, including Claude Monet and Pierre-Auguste Renoir, rejected the academic focus on meticulous drawing and smooth finishes in favor of visible brushstrokes, the exploration of light, and a more immediate sensory experience of the world. This rebellion came to a head during the Paris Salon exhibitions. The official Salon often rejected works by these new artists, leading to the creation of alternative exhibitions, such as the Salon des Refusés in 1863, where rejected works like Manet's Luncheon on the Grass shocked the public and critics alike. The Legacy of Academic Art By the late 19th century, the influence of academic art had waned, overshadowed by the innovations of the avant-garde. However, its legacy remains significant. Many of the techniques developed in academic settings continue to form the basis of art education today, particularly in figure drawing and composition. Additionally, the emphasis on historical and mythological subject matter influenced later movements, including symbolism and even certain strands of 20th century art. In hindsight, academic art represents both the height of technical accomplishment in European painting and a symbol of the conservatism that the modern art movement sought to overcome. As such, it occupies a complex but central place in the history of visual art. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. Your support truly means everything to us. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.